welcome to UAT time within the United Country special by First Ukraine. You can find us on the frequencies available on our website, firstua.com. I'm Sergei Velichansky. And I am Olivier Vedrain. UAT time is dedicated to bring Ukraine and Europe closer to each other by introducing the real Ukraine to the rest of the world. This time, we're going to have a good time. Our guest today is Brian Borner, chief editor of Kiev Post. Welcome. Hey guys, thanks for having me. <laughs> Thank you for stopping by for a cup of tea. And uh, this is Kiev Post, just in case you didn't know what that is. And this is actually, if you want to know what is happening in Kiev and in Ukraine, this is what you need to look for. Yep. Um, uh, actually, it's not only in the, uh, uh, in the printed format, right? It's on the internet. So people all over the world can sign up to it, right? Yes, as a matter of fact, our print copy is only 11,000 weekly. Oh. But our 75% our of our audience is, is uh, you know, abroad, online. Most of our audience is online. And uh, so that's, that's really the place where the readers come nowadays. <laughs> All right, because I thought that, you know, Kiev is flooded with Kiev Post. No, At least no. the places I go, yeah. that's where it no, is. We, we, we try to have a good uh, distribution, but okay. you'll see them in the center, yes. the big uh, yes. business centers, restaurants, hotels, and so forth. So Maybe it's me that I go to the right places. You're going to the right places. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's why. Glad you you to hear. <laughs> All right. The hot places. Sounds good, yes. Now, um, well, this, is, this year is 20th anniversary. So you've, you've gone quite a distance as, as the magazine. And uh, there are some interesting parts of the history that Wikipedia knows. Right. And so I kind of... Studied up on us. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. So the American Jet Sundin started the magazine in 1995, somewhere there. That was the first exactly. owner. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So then the magazine's owner was... Um, Mohammed Zahur. Right. right. He bought in 19 in 2009, okay. six years ago. All right. Mm -hmm. So with with that period of time, there is some um, interesting, uh, you know, cases, uh, events took place when you were even once or twice fired from the magazine. I've been fired twice. Yes. Twice. Mm. Quit oh. once, fired twice. Oh, yeah. okay. But I'm back. Okay, you are back. Still there. <laughs> Terminator. This is Terminator. This was the back of <laughs> Yes, I'll be back. Okay. I'll be back. <laughs> now, um, what's the current status of the magazine? You know, ownership and... Well, well we're, we're, I mean, we're very uh, grateful and uh, happy to be alive. 20 years in business in Ukraine is not an easy task. Exactly. And we've been, uh, uh, we owe it all to the readers, the advertisers, the subscribers now who are uh, subscribing to us online. And uh, I think we've found the niche, we hope so, you know, every day in business you have to keep proving yourself, proving yourself. But we've been fortunate to have two, uh, only two owners, two good owners, the founder who's an American and the current owner who is a British citizen. Mm -hmm. And they've kept on the traditions of investing in the paper of editorial independence uh, and these are the, the standards and traditions that we feel obligated the current staff uh, to carry on into the future because a lot of people help help get us to where we are now uh, and we certainly want to keep keep it going forward we think we have an audience it's changed uh, I think in the beginning we had mostly expats when Ukraine was mm -hmm supposed mm -hmm. to be the next hot thing after the mm -hmm. collapse of the Soviet Union. And so we had, uh, you know, actually even that was the, before the Internet was popular, heyday of advertising, we were doing actually even, you know, uh, better in, in, in financial terms. It changed over the years as, as advertising uh, scattered over the Internet. And now I would say, you know, half of our, our print readership is... Uh, Ukrainians, English-speaking Ukrainians, mm -hmm. and that's changed. So I think it's about 50-50. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, in the course of especially probably uh, two years uh, since Euromaidan and on, uh, well, actually even before, you have always been a quite, uh, well, a, that's the way it looks, quite objective. You know, if the uh, authority does it right, then you do give some uh, compliments. But if the authority doesn't seem to be doing or going the right direction, 
you're quite critical uh, in, uh, in, in, in some terms. How do you manage to keep that balance? Ah, that's a good question. That's our hardest, and I'm glad that uh, when you read it, uh, you look at us as, as objective because that's what we strive to be although that might be a, a hard thing to achieve because everything is subjective in life mm -hmm. we that's try true. to be fair mm -hmm. we try to be balanced we try to be both sides as our but, but it doesn't look like you have a certain agenda that's what the good thing for me that well as our a publisher recently said we had a, a nice 20th anniversary party every every government thinks we're opposition we, we are not we are <laughs> yeah, every government we that's took we took uh, critical stances when we think they're warranted but I think one of the best things that we've done is that we've not gotten partisan we've not uh, aligned ourselves with any political forces we are just you know whether we're right or wrong you're gonna get an honest point of view on the opinion pages and fair reporting on, on the <clears throat> news pages doesn't mean we're not tough uh, it's sort of like a tough love thing mm -hmm. we think that we think that uh, in a democracy uh, you have to have robust free speech that includes robust criticism and you know sometimes we've gotten uh, <laughs> kind of in trouble for this yeah. but we're we're still alive and I think it's it's because uh, you know our readers want us the diplomatic community the business community the tourist community they have gone to bat for us and fought for us uh, over the years yeah. and I think that helps because they say keep doing what you're doing don't don't take one side or the other, tell us what you think, report it the way it is, and that's what we try to do. But I, am, I, am, I really agree with you. When, uh, when I, uh, I saw this newspaper and when uh, I am reading or read this newspaper, I can see the newspaper like in, uh, we have in Europe, the European Union or in USA, you have the same, same way of thinking, independent, uh, try to be objective. And uh, for me, this is uh, really, I think in Ukraine you, you are not a lot who are like that and that's very interesting because uh, w when I want to have a really objective information uh, about what's happening in Ukraine, I go to Kiev Post or to other newspapers as your newspaper, but mm -hmm. th this newspaper, Kiev Post for me, that's come from Washington Post or something like that? You know, I don't even think I, the, I worked for Jet Sundin, the first owner, uh, but I can't remember. I think Post was a common name for a newspaper. Mm. I don't think it, it may not have been the best <laughs> name because it doesn't translate so well, mm -hmm. but uh, it, it's our name, it's our brand. We're very proud of it. I don't think we're going to change it. Uh, but, I don't see you know. Be because the first time I, I saw this newspaper, I, I, I say, this is newspaper f come from uh, U.S. diaspora or what? Because that, that was really like a uh, U.S. or European Union uh, newspaper. The same organization. Yeah. Yeah, no, we, we uh, you know, we're one of the many posts, I guess, newspapers in the world. But I think what set us apart was, listen, guys, you know, we, you know how the media ownership is structured here. It's yeah. mainly an oligarchy. And, mm -hmm. and uh, these oligarchs use their media outlets as political influence, as political tools to promote their causes and businesses and to punish their enemies and, and do that. Uh, and they lose money. Free speech is not their big priority. Making money is not their big priority. Their big priority is holding on to big media outlets that, yeah. that, that where they can influence. And we also, sadly, uh, some people practice this uh, jinza where you, you disguise, uh, somebody pays you for an article. We still get offers, people saying, can you write us a how much for a good article about us and, and we have to explain advertising is advertising and when you buy that we label it advertising and mm -hmm. you can write whatever you want yeah. mm -hmm. and news is news and you can't write whatever you want it's right we, it's what the journalist you know uh, thinks is is uh, the way to present the issue or the person but you, you journalists in Kiev Post they, they are they, they are foreigner for a large part or uh, yeah. Ukrainian yeah. Mostly Ukrainian. Yes. Mostly Ukrainian. There's actually, we have about 35 people now. We're very fortunate to have continued, you know, support of the, of the community to have this size of staff. About 20, 23 people in uh, editorial, mm -hmm. 12 people in uh, commercial. There's only four, uh, five expats, uh, native uh, uh, speakers, because we need a few native speakers to make it uh, to make it read, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, properly like a native uh, language paper, mm -hmm. um, because you know, as you, as you guys are, if you guys are multilingual, you know, it's very difficult to write outside of your your native language yeah, yes. because you're yeah. 
your brain is just so wired into uh, uh, that your native language in terms of the written word. So we're multi multilingual, multinational staff, but primarily Ukrainian or Ukrainian newspaper with the Ukrainian staff. And I want to ask you because you are in Ukraine from how many years now? Oh, first time 1996, almost 20. This last time, uh, I've been chief editor again since uh, 2008, mm -hmm. but I was first chief editor in, in 1999. So it's 20 uh, years coming and going. And what is your analysis about all the change we have in Ukraine now? You, what, what you think? Because you are like a witness of. I feel thing. like it. <laughs> I feel like it. And you know, I don't know. You, you came here very early, right? Yeah, I, the first time this was in 1994 when I was a student. And you're native. Me? Yes, yes, I am. And I've so been you here all the time. You see it all. <laughs> and I, I was such a shock for me when I came here for the first time. And this is why I can say, you know, you know, journalists are critical. People think we're pessimistic. We see all doom and gloom. Actually, that's not true. Compared to 1996 when I first came here to today, Ukraine has made a lot of progress in so many ways. Uh, it, we, we want it to be better, we want it to be more, we obviously still have some of the same problems like many nations do, but, and we would like to see Ukraine because of its specific history, geography, and political situation has, has even more complicated issues than, than, uh, uh, than, than many other nations. But, you know, by and large, I, I can tell you that, uh, uh, I mean, compared to the Kuchma days and the Lazarenko days, uh, we are relatively uh, doing much better and free speech is much mm -hmm. better. We still have that problem with trying to get the economy booming, going, growing, defeating corruption, oligarchy, rule of, uh, establishing rule of law, and uh, that that hinders the media. I mean, we need to be media, to be truly independent, you need to be financially sustainable. And most media outlets are either dependent on oligarch or dependent on grants, and it's not, it's not a good situation. So the, the media is just a reflection of, of things that are going on in the broader society. But oh, I tell you, compared to the neighborhood, I wouldn't trade places uh, with anybody. We're much freer than Russia and the Ukraine in that sense is headed in the right direction. Yeah, yeah. basically that's um, the question I had. Uh, it's good that you touched that. Um, as far as I know, Moscow has always been kind of um, mm, ahead of U uh, Ukraine in the English media, uh, like uh, Moscow Times uh, and others. Do you know anything? How are they doing? In, in oh, Russia. I tell you, I was shocked. I, I was a longtime reader of the Moscow Times, worked in Moscow, uh, lived in Moscow, uh, but they've gone from, uh, this is a city of 12, 14 million people. Moscow Times is now going from daily to weekly. It, it you know, with the Putin's change in uh, laws that, mm -hmm. were, that banned foreign ownership mm -hmm. of media, mm -hmm. it's now in Russian ownership, and I don't think it has a bright future. I think it has a dismal future as a uh, as a business and as a uh, outlet of independent journalism mm -hmm. it's it's sad that Russia is going the other way okay. on freedom and uh, but we're going to capitalize on it we've already hired two people from the Moscow Times <laughs> and we're, I, we've got a couple columnists who used to write for the Moscow yeah, Times and so Russia's loss is, is Ukraine's gain well. yes a lot of journalists Uh, now our uh, Russian journalists yeah. came to, Mos to to Kiev. A lot That's of them. Right. Well, for, 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 they for wanted, press freedom. They want to taste the uh, taste the air or uh, smell the air of freedom. Yeah. Yeah. But well, I think they will close uh, Mo Mos Moscow time. The, they will close this newspaper. Well, unless they maybe shape next it up, year or shape it up yeah. in a comfortable package. I uh, can't. Don't I, I don't see a future really in a. If, if it becomes a propaganda outlet, I don't see how advertisers would would mm -hmm. would, would want to advertise in something Unless like that. Unless it's sponsored uh, from right. the budget. Unless it's sponsored to to, to right. make a good look. That yeah, you see, we have a like Echo Moscow, the radio yeah. station, that makes it look like you know there's free press, yeah. or but free, it's not. free speech. Yeah, it has been, but uh, there's some questions now, and and there are actually now. some of their jur radio journalists are are abroad, yeah. basically living yeah. in exile, and broadcasting mm -hmm. yeah. there. Um, 
As the magazine, you are behind uh, some interesting uh, projects pretty much every year. Like one of them was uh, took place in October, uh, Kyiv Post Employment Fair. Uh, you know, you have this article gives boost to job seekers, and you've done it for quite a few years. Yes, I think more than ten years. Okay, okay. Uh, basically, from the outsiders, I heard that it's quite a big. Uh, a very vital, very interesting thing in the life of Kyiv, where people can really get some good, uh, uh, f you know, get in touch with good uh, employers. So, what, what, you know, why? What's this idea for? Why, why are you behind this? Well, we have a few signature events. This is one of them, and I think it evolved because we used to have a very robust when the economy was more robust, employment ad section. We had international organizations, businesses, many of them sought English speakers, mm -hmm. so naturally they would advertise in the key post. Yeah. So the employment fair grew out of that, where we would twice a year, fall and spring, uh, put on this, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the fair exhibition, for the uh, yeah. exhibition where we have 25 to 50, depending on the market, uh, employees, uh, or employers and match them up with the employees and it's a really good event we've added i think we've improved uh recently by getting expert speakers in particular industries or government uh we, or uh a human resource specialist to talk about how to put together a cv what to put on the cv mm -hmm. what to leave off the cv mm -hmm. how to get a job interview uh how to negotiate for salaries things like that things that uh, people need to know. Yeah, that, that's very good because remember, we, we talked about that with um, Jean-Jacques Hervé, you know, yeah. the French banker. And he say, in Ukraine, we need concrete projects, concrete things. Right. And what, what, are, what are, we are speaking now is concrete. You need to show to the person how to do a CV, how to find a job, how to develop a, a, a company, how to sell, how to, how to buy. And it's really a good well, event. But this this uh, employment fair uh, pretty much even goes much farther because uh, it puts together yeah, the yeah, job seekers mm -hmm. and the you know uh, the offer you know in the uh, and the uh, employers. And that's, uh, a re that's really a need in Ukraine because of the management uh, way in Ukraine, very post-Soviet management. This is really good to do this event because uh, you destroy all the posts of its system with this event yeah. that's very well good. let me tell you that I know a quite uh, you know a, a several of my friends that have found some good jobs <laughs> due to this so that we're grateful yeah <laughs> we're playing are. matchmaker in that yeah. sense <laughs> yes yes actually yes yeah um, you know um, because you know it's not easy for a man to find uh, the, the the what can I say the, the the chef deputy of a company or the boss of the company or and uh, you know this is in this soviet attitude you, this this really really uh, efficient to organize those, those events how do you find it uh, how easy it is to maintain self sufficiency of the magazine or is it really a possibility self sufficiency or is it just a dream well our fate is tied to ukraine's economy mm -hmm. and that's not good Mm -hmm. uh, we used to be very profitable, so profitable that a lot of people now forget, but the history is that the key post was Jed Sundance first, but then he started Correspondent and Big Mir and many other titles that became more profitable, mm -hmm. and then the key post became just a small part of that. When the global crisis hit, we got uh, wiped out, and Jed put us up for sale, Mr. Sundance, and, and fortunately, Mohammed Zahor bought us. We're still trying to move back to profitability, mm -hmm. uh, but we're still we're still losing money. So um, we do events, conferences, employment fairs, organize different uh, 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 events. We have our advertising. We have, I think, we're the first uh, newspaper or news organization that charged uh, paywall for online. And so, little by little. I think we're going to restore it, but we still have our, our employer's investment subsidy, if you will, and we formed a nonprofit, and this is the future. I mean, this is part of media financing now. We have a mon nonprofit media development foundation mm -hmm. that uh, specifically goes after grants, and, uh, uh, and we've been successful to some extent in getting people who, who want 
to support independent media in Ukraine and don't really want to give the money to, uh, you know, other uh, privately owned stations yeah. or oligarch owned stations. Sure. So, so we've been we've been very fortunate, uh, and I hope our good fortune continues. And from where you those grants come from? From the EU, U.S., Canada? Yeah, there's been you know, especially since the Euromaidan mm -hmm. revolution mm -hmm. and uh, the war. Mm -hmm. There's been interest in uh, in uh, from from different donors uh, uh, through uh, U.S. funded projects, Canadian funded projects to to uh, support mm -hmm. uh, different journalism <coughs> positions, support coverage, cover you know, give a travel budget so that we can go to the war front and and so forth. Things that we wouldn't otherwise normally be able to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And uh, the, the the Media Development Foundation is devoted to uh, one of the biggest donors is is the Danish Foreign Ministry. They give a pr percentage of their budget every year to democracy development. Whoa. Media is included under that. So they're supporting a lot of programs, and I'm a regional coordinator for one of their programs in in uh, investigative programs, objective <coughs> investigative program in Belarus, Ukraine, and Moldova. And so our Media Development Foundation, which is founded by Key Post journalists. Uh, promotes investigative journalism uh, training and and uh, exchanges uh, where we send uh, journalists uh, you know uh, journalism students go to work for you know different uh, news organizations TV radio newspaper just uh, trying to promote the promote the profession yeah. which needs promoting and needs financing yeah and with finance we, you will be independent and that's good yes well and I want to say that uh as far as uh, UAT time goes, we'd love to be part of whatever you guys do. If there is anything we can do and uh, in partnership to make things even better, then we'd love to. You know, the more nice. the merrier. President Poroshenko said this is going to be all apologies to the French. It's going to be an English-speaking nation <laughs> next year. <laughs> Right, and so uh, the well, more the merrier. You know, this is the only French that speak English. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because you know, a lot, uh, in in France, we don't like to speak another language than French. We know, you know of that. Of course, it's so beautiful. Yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. We know that. But, but you know, I spent my childhood in South Carolina, USA, and Canada, and that's why. But you know, see, it's an example of what, where Ukraine is going. Ukrainians are open to the world. They don't require visas for you to come here. They're interested in speaking many languages. It's a big contrast to some of our neighbors to the That's east. That's true. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it was a great joy that yeah. you came uh, Thank to see you us. Thank you very and, much. Uh, it's going to be Thanks, guys. Uh, that flew exciting. by fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 25 minutes flies fast. When yeah. We have good As guests. always. Yes. Mm -hmm. It was United Country UAT time by First Ukraine. Our guest was Brian Bonner, chief editor of Kyiv Post. Olivier Vedrin and Sergei Velichansky were working for you in the studio. Stay with us and we will show to you the real crane. Thank you for being with us. Have a good day and see you soon. <laughs>